Here in this place, new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this face, our fears and our dreaming. Brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now, and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly, give us the courage to enter the soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. <clears throat> My dear friends, today, this Sunday, we celebrate the most holy body and blood of Christ, or what we call Corpus Christi Sunday. Always the Sunday after Trinity Sunday, and two Sundays after Pentecost. And so truly, the the Eucharist is the, the source and summit of our faith as we gather together, as we gather in the spirit of prayer. And so let us once again acknowledge the real presence of the Lord, open to his grace and healing love. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the cup of blessing. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the true vine. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. And we say together, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. <clears throat> Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up 12 pillars corresponding to the 12 tribes of Israel. He sent young men of the children of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed oxen as offerings of well-being to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in the basins and half of the blood he dashed against the altar. 
Then he took the book of the covenant and read it, read it in the hearing of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. Moses took the blood and dashed it on the people and said, See the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Precious in the sight of the Lord, is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant, the son of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will I lift up, up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his peoples. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and perfect tent, not made with his hands, that is, not of his creation, he entered once for all into the holy place not for the blood of goats and calves, but with the, his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls with the sprinkling of ashes of a heifer sanctifies those who have been defiled so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, Purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, because the death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions under the first covenant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as it had, 
as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it at you in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once heard a story about a seminarian who was giving a guided tour to a group of Japanese tourists, who were largely non-Catholic, but very much appreciative of Western art, especially Western sacred art. And so he was giving them the tour of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, and he was explaining to them the different, uh, the many works, the masterpieces that are there, and not only the frescoes and the uh, paintings and uh, also the you know the carvings and the, and the uh, statues so many things when he got to the chapel of the blessed sacrament he tried to explain to them why this chapel is very special this is the place where of course we have the blessed sacrament the real presence of the, the body of Christ and so as the people were going on their way to the next place to visit, an elderly gentleman, one of the tourists, stood back and said, uh, excuse me, can you explain again blessed sacrament? And so he tried to expand it further and talk about the real presence of the Lord, the centrality of our faith, and so forth and so on. After his explanation, this elderly, elderly man said to him, I think I understand. So, what you're telling me is, what is in this chapel is greater than any work of art in this magnificent church. And how true he understood. What is greater in this chapel is more precious than any work of art in this chapel, in this church. Because it is not made of human hands, but divine hands. Today, the celebration of the body and blood of Christ invites us once again to truly value and appreciate the worth and the importance of the Blessed Sacrament, the real body and blood of Christ, the real presence. What more can God give to us than in the Eucharist? And what more can we ask of God than that which we receive in the Eucharist? As we celebrate today's feast, the readings try to help us understand and appreciate more the, the value and the meaning of the Eucharist. In the first reading, we read about the covenant agreement. We see how Moses, the mediator, is ritualizing this formal agreement with the sprinkling of the blood. That blood symbolizes the bond, you know, that, that sacred trust between God and God's people. And so, the son, by, by sprinkling that uh, with this blood, the sacrificial blood, Moses is saying, okay, we are entering into this agreement with our God. But we know that the people will often break the covenant time and again through sinfulness, and that would lead to misery and heartache. But even at the bleakest moments, they could always turn back to God and receive atonement and forgiveness and new life and new hope for the future. Even if the people or us are not always faithful, God will always remain faithful to us. And what God seeks of us is not so much perfection that we do it all, you know, that we follow everything to the maximum, but that we do our best. We do our best. In the second reading, we see that image of the blood and the sacrifice as the letter to the Hebrews tries to explain to the Christians, these are the Christians of Jewish descent. They were first and foremost uh, came to the faith as Jews, 
and later on converted to Christ. And he uses that image of the, of the sacrificial offering that the high priest would do once a year in the temple. Again, taking that sacrificial blood and reminding the people about their sacred bond and trust with the Lord. But what he says is that, look, you know, Jesus was really the sacrificial man, the one who shed his blood on the cross. And so by doing so, he did it once and for all, meaning we don't repeat that blood sacrifice. Jesus Christ did it on Good Friday, once and for all. And what we do is we memorialize, we remember his actions through the celebration of the Eucharist. And of course, the Gospel reading draws our attention to the time when the Eucharist was given, handed on to us, and that was exactly at the Last Supper, the Passover meal. Remember, Jesus and his followers were Jewish. They were celebrating the Passover. That is, they were ritualizing, remembering the, the freedom that God gave them from Egypt in slavery to their newfound freedom in the Promised Land. However, Jesus took that covenant and gave it a new meaning by giving us a new uh, ritual, a new covenant, saying no longer are we talking about leaving a particular country, Egypt, but all of us are invited on this spiritual journey from slavery into sin, from darkness and death, into the splendor of new light, and that Jesus himself would be the sacrificial offering. And that's why Jesus says, take this bread, eat, this is my body, take this cup, this is my blood. Remember what I am doing here with you tonight. Remember the sacrifice that you will see on Good Friday. This is what we celebrate. Our participation in the Eucharist, especially when we are able to gather, is not so much a reward for good behavior, nor is it mainly to fulfill that checkpoint, you know, uh, that list that we have, so with the Mass, check. No. Eucharist is gift. It's gift freely given and gift that should be freely received. Pope Francis often says, and I love this line, communion is not a reward for the perfect, but a medicine for those who need it. Communion is not a reward for the perfect, but a medicine for those who need it. This is a good reminder for all of us, especially when we, when we catch ourselves in that moment when we're in, either in communion line or we're in the pew, and then we happen to see someone that we say, you know, that person shouldn't go out for communion. We don't know what's calling that person to, to God's forgiveness. We have to leave it to the mercy of God. It is not for us to judge. We can certainly help and guide, but ultimately it is God who is the judge. And God who knows that whether or not that person needs the medicine at that time. Truly the body and blood that Jesus gives us is to nourish us and sustain us. It is the bread for our journey. And each time we celebrate it and receive, we are refreshed and nourished. So let us once again turn to our faith, recognizing the real presence. Christ truly in our midst. Christ is truly present. And when we come back to receive that holy food, how much we are invigorated and renewed to go forth and to be the disciples that we are called to be. It is truly a privilege and a blessing to be gathered at the Eucharistic table. And we feel that sense, that absence, even though, as I always say, we are part of the mystical body, but we feel that lack, uh, that point of gathering, and hopefully soon we will gather again. And let us appreciate it. The times that we've been away that we couldn't gather, I hope it only makes us hunger even more. And if we are able to truly receive the Eucharist as gift, then by doing so, we become witnesses of God's masterpiece, His handiwork that is revealed to us 
before our very eyes. I invite you not to renew your faith with me as we say, I believe in God, the Father of Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the conceived with the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, the life of the last Trusting in the Lord, we now present our needs and the needs of our own community and the needs of the world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church, the sacrament of unity, will draw all believers to know the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. That those elected to serve in government may do so with honesty, humility, and integrity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As a, that as a society and a church community, we may atone for the atrocities committed against the indigenous peoples in the residential schools of the past, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the faithful of our community grow in appreciation of and participation in adoration and Eucharistic devotion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the dearly departed, especially all of our parishioners for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you offer your beloved Son in the sacrament of the Eucharist, we humbly bring these prayers in the name of Christ, our portion and our cup. Amen. The offertory hymn, give the finest weed, 603. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift the finest weed. Nourishing your faithful by the sacred mystery, 
You make them holy so that the human race, bound by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Sanna, in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name. gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and, and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church has spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop Wayne, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostle, St. Anthony, Daniel, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be glorious to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 table in, in presence and spirit. We heed the teaching of our Lord. We recognize his true presence as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil grace you grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. If you have someone nearby, extend the sign of peace or send that greeting of peace from your hearts. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. In him, he does a chant, Ubi Caritas. Ubi Caritas. Oh. 
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share your divine light, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. The Lord, before our final blessing, again, uh, thank you everyone for joining us for the celebration of the Mass. It seems that we're making progress, so keep praying. I think uh, our reopening should be soon. We don't know exactly when, but God willing, things are going in the right direction, so we pray for that. Continue to support our community here, support your own churches, so that we can continue our ministry. The Lord be with you. And God's blessing and peace be upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has ended. Go forth in the peace of Christ and glorify the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed Sunday, and we will conclude by singing, Now thank we all our God, 535. Five. Now thank we all our God. Now thank we all our God. Breathe.